way back in the year 1879. The arrival of Amakiwa, the Jesuit missionary, kick-started the development of St. Mary's Cathedral, Minor Basilica. Viewers should note that at the time it was only known as St. Mary's. In August of 2023, this church was celebrating 120 years of existence. However, the celebration did not take place until the 10th of December that very year. The three daughters were lucky enough to have been invited for these commemorations. As promised, Sibuile and I, Bishop Umshek, as the Archbishop of Bulayo, to answer some of the questions that we failed to answer for you that require expert opinion. So, over to you, Snorky. Bishop, I know you have not been there in the past 120 years, but can you please share your experience and your knowledge for these years that you participated? Yes, it is true that I have not been here for 120 years, but I have been in the Archdiocese of Bulawayo for the past 36 years, which I think is long enough. So from my experience, yes, we have come a long way, different times, of the country economically, politically, socially, and religious wise. Yes, when you look into the church and the faces what we have gone through, it has been a long journey. But it is a journey worth remembering and living. The church came here over 145 years ago, the Roman Catholic Church. And they started with the missionaries going around, educating the people, providing health services for them. Of course, they started in the rural areas. And from there, the church has spread to all over. As of now, the Archdiocese of Bulawayo covers a vast area from Lupane to Gwanda to Plum Tree to Nkai, covering so many districts and uh, three provinces and the number wise we have grown in very good number the institutions we have grown we have at the moment 50 parishes uh, which includes also uh, rural missions we have schools hospitals and so on and so forth and as of now we have many local priests and nuns of course in the past it was mostly missionaries now missionaries are very few who can be counted on our fingers. Okay. So the local church has taken over everything. So the growth from past to present is very remarkable and uh, I should say we are very happy about it. Viewers should also note that missionaries went to King Lobemola to seek for permission to build a place of worship. But the king was reluctant. He did not believe in Christianity. However, Snoki, the king wasn't that bad. He get, did give them a place to stay in his royal palace, about 18 kilometers away from present-day Bulawayo. This place is known as Old Bulawayo. They stayed in the king's crow, where they built the very first altar, which to this day is still standing. Worshippers can go visit the altar for prayer. I think we should go visit it sometime, don't you think? After we're done with this, of course. Yeah, and guess what, Shanti? This structure was constructed in 1903, being the third in Matepele land. Wait, confirm the first one was, I think it's Mpandeni, way off in Klamchi, right? Yeah, and the second one is located in Makokowa, which was named after St. Patrick. <laughs> I haven't been here for 36 years, yes. but I believe I've been a part of this diocese for quite a while. And to my knowledge, we haven't had an event at Old Bulawayo where the first altar is. And I was wondering why haven't we had a type of event, as a get-together as Catholic of the Archdiocese of Bulawayo at the very first altar? Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm very happy that you have not been here for a very long time. <laughs> that is why you don't know much about it. Yes, every year we go there at least once or twice a year to commemorate the date. Okay, sometimes there is no fixed date, but every year I can say the people from Christ the King Parish under whose uh, boundaries that place falls, and some students go there, especially the students from the tertiary institutions that is Nasdaq and Polytech, they go there. And this year, the youth 
of the Archdiocese of Bulawayo went there for a day of prayer. Yes, so we are not able to go there very often because now it is under the national monuments and they are the custodians of the place and we are not uh, allowed to disturb the place there much but we can go there yes, sometimes we have masses there. Shanti, have you ever been to Great Zimbabwe? I don't believe I have. Why? Can you see that these stones are similar to the ones that built Great Zimbabwe? This is pure granite, can't you see? Really? Yeah, who could have done this? Well, I'm not really sure, but look at this flag. It's got dates and stuff. Here I'm seeing 25, and I believe this is March and 1903. But what I know is that these bricks were hand carved by the cross. When I say cross, I mean the people from Croatia. Where is that? Way, way in the European oceans and oceans. And guess what? They came all the way from Croatia using ships. There was no aeroplane, there was no train. They used the steam ship to get here and carve these stones for us. I thought maybe these people were hired maybe somewhere in Magwekwe, maybe somewhere. No, love. This was the work of professionals during one of the, all the way to Africa, during one of the wars. I'm sure we are, we are the likest people to have such. We really are lucky as the city of Blau to have had this church built for us. an idea you would see that there are a parish day it's fine because i'm now confused i have heard so many names cathedral basilica st mary's immaculate i'm confused okay snuggy so here's how it is simple and straight it was father Bartholomew, a jesuit superior who suggested that the new church be called immaculate conception of mary um it was to commemorate the 50th jubilee of the immaculate conception which was declared by Pope Pius of that time. So this church, so in this church, the first foundation stone was laid and blessed on the 25th of March in 1902. And the very first mass was celebrated on Easter Sunday, 3rd of April in 1904. It was then extended in 1957. Why? Because it had gained diocese status, meaning was all about the of the church. No, honestly, it looks the same to me. This corner. Okay, it makes sense. You can see that although the stone looks the same, this one is a bit fresher or like less worn. But it's still very beautiful, all of it. Yeah, it's really beautiful. We are so blessed to have this. Yeah. Yes, that is not very easy to answer that <laughs> because there have been so many somewhere here for a short time, somewhere here for a longer time, some have been visitors. I should say there must have been in the past 120 years, there must have been at least 80 priests who have passed through and served here. So does the 24 pillars have a meaning? Well, turns out the Catholic Church doesn't do anything without a reason. So the 24 pillars in total represent the fulfillment of time as seen in the 24 hours of the day. Also, we see 24 pillars playing a role in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The altar there is held by 24 pillars. Can you imagine? 24 pillars yeah. in Basilica in Rome? Yeah, Basilica Day. Basilica. No, this is the minor basilica. Don't get it twisted. However, we'll get back to that later. Okay. But since we're still in here, what is a dogma? A dogma is the truth revealed by God, a doctrine, or philosophy, or set of beliefs. Wow, I think me and the viewers are really been educated about the church. <laughs> So right now we are right in front of the altar, but because of Catholic culture, we're not allowed to enter into this space. Oh, just yeah, it's known as the sanctuary because of its sanctity. Okay. So they will have to admire everything from a distance, and they will not admire. Everything. Look at that altar. That is a huge block of pure green. They even have a red carpet to show us how important it is. 
and right above them, right above the altar, is a glass stained mural. Do you know how hard it is to stain glass? Like, I don't want to get into the chemistry of it, but to produce a picture. I can't even imagine how it's done. And can you guess why it's called St. Mary's? Oh, because that is Mary. Yeah, you see. admiring the beauty of this altar and the church. Did you know that? That is a cathedral. 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 Shanti. That's the difference. Come on. Cathedral is the bishop's chair and the cathedral is where the bishop's chair stays oh. or found. Oh, so this is why the church is called the cathedral. Yes, because the Kogula Paula style of scam is called. Thank you. Much brighter note. Um, um, going forward with the cathedral and just Basilica as a parish, where do you see us going? What future do you see for this church, for this place of worship? Do you think we might be having an extension of the church soon? Because the church was extended at some point. Are we having another one anytime soon? Okay, thank you for your vision and ambition, <laughs> I should say. Yes, uh, we cannot extend because there is no area and extension of this magnitude for this particular building is almost impossible because of its ar architectural uh, nature. And it's going to be very expensive and I don't see the need of extending it because even if the people come, we can have two or three masses a day which can accommodate all people. This is an exhibition commemorating the 120 years of all the wonderful work that was done for us by the Jesuit missionaries. No, it was not the Jesuits only. This building was then handed over to the Congregation of Marion Hill Missionaries. Really? Yeah. Well, let's have a walk through of this exhibition. Snarky, what's this? From my research, this is Bishop Ignatius Anus the first prefect apostolic who was consecrated bishop of Bursaris and vicar apostolic of Bulawayo Vicariate. Whoa, 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 I'm hearing a lot of big words and I feel like I'm not the only one, but can you explain what prefect apostolic, um, apostolic vicariate is? Lami ni chwalenzi mguti mkul megonge konoko, nyinga kamamanga wo ask the bishop. Yeah. Well, yes. Bishop, while we were doing our research for um, this documentary, we came across some terms and words that we didn't understand and that we thought we should ask you for your expert opinion. So, what is a prefecture? Okay, prefecture is an administrative area of the church which is directly under the robe. It is not a diocese because that area is new, it is not grown enough. For a diocese to be called a diocese, it should have a certain number of people, number of priests, number of institutions, so on and so forth. Prefectures are erected where the church is new and uh, starting afresh, where the numbers are low and where the primary evangelization, evangelization takes place. Especially in mission countries, it starts with the prefecture, goes to the diocese and next archdiocese. So these are the three stages of a the church. So what is a vicariate? Vicariate and prefecture is more or less the same. It's only a different uh, uh, prefecture is uh, directly under Rome, but it is administered by an apostolic prefect. He is almost like the bishop, but he does not have the title of a bishop because a bishop is only called when he is administering a diocese. So in Authority-wise, he's like a bishop, but he's given the title of a prefecture because the area he administers is a prefecture. As people, we have challenges that we face in life. So what what challenges have you faced here at the Basilica as the Archbishop? Okay, well, that is a difficult question, so the challenges, because we all have got challenges, personal, economic, social, so on and so forth. I should say I did not face much of a challenge here at Basilica because it has been well established, things are there, people who come here are very active, very participating, and so on and so forth. Of course, we have the economic challenges, 
although people come in big numbers, our people are not that economically able-bodied to support the church, yes, to look after the church, the maintenance, the needs of the whole place, yes, we have financial challenges. But faith-wise, I should say I'm happy, the faith is growing, people are very participating. Well, and as for the future of this? The future of the place, well, it all depends on our people, how participative and cooperative they are. If people are cooperative and willing to cooperate with all the activities of this, we can do many activities, especially for children, youth, adults, we can have uh, Bible lessons, various educational programs, uh, faith-based education, and so on and so forth. We have a lot of activities to do, but of course we need the personnel and resources, and time of course, for all the people in this busy time. Well, thank you so much for your time and for having given us this opportunity to learn from you. It's an opportunity that most people wouldn't have gotten, so thank you so much for your time and for having given us this opportunity to learn from you and to answer our questions. Okay, thank you very much and you are most welcome anytime. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to wait for the bishop, but a little more depth on these people who groomed and grew this church. So my research told me that Bishop Ignatius was in power or he held forward the church from 1932 to 1936. He retired on the 9th of January and was to die the next month on the 26th. Then on 2nd June 1951, Bishop Otto Frigo Smith took over. He worked for 23 years and retired in 1974. During his tenure, extension was done to the extending to, to the existing church which began in 1957. The extension doubled the capacity cathedral. Further alterations were carried out by Father Odido Wigger, CMM, and Father Andrew Busby. It was in 1974 under Bishop Adolf that Ulawa Yogen dies as its status. During this time is when the African nationalism started, you know, in Biangulego, the independence fight. Well, during this time, the ruling party, or what we know as the colonists, suspected the Roman Catholic Church for aiding the freedom fighters, or the known, they're known as guerrillas. And so, Bishop Adolf was one of the unfortunate priests who was killed for aiding it is a shame that priests and bishops alike killed, were killed for aiding Ama Africans Uguba Batole in Kululego. After Bishop Rico, Bishop Henry Cullen CMM took over and he is endowed with development of the Catholic in this region. The arrival of other missionaries and other congregations, lay associations and many more. It was during Bishop Cullen's tenure that Pope John Pope II visited the country in 1988 and the Pope held mass at Ascot Race Course on the 12th of September 1988. Well, after Bishop Henry Cullen, or Archbishop, we got an Archbishop from our roots and our home, Archbishop Alex Hyatt Newbin. He was in power from 1998 to 2007 and he is still alive to this day. He's under the status of Emeritus to the state. Wait, you say it's higher smoothie. Yeah, I know. Okay. Smoothie. Okay. <laughs> but after him came the then and now in power Bishop Alex Archbishop Alex Thomas. Under his rule and during his time in twenty thirteen, this church was made a minor basilica. Shant, you spoke of Archbishop Alex Thomas, but he didn't tell us when he was ordained. Well, he was ordained to the Archbishop of Bolar on the 12th of September 2009. I was about two years that very month. And unlike these other bishops, I have grown up with Bishop Alex Thomas, and it has been an honor to spend time with these people. Was but he a priest before? Of course he was. You have to be a priest before you are a bishop or an archbishop. Oh.